Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Now, I trust this finds you feeling blessed in Jesus, friends. Truly blessed to be born again to be filled with light, to be fleeing from the darkness, to have a hunger and thirst in your soul for righteousness and the things of God, and most of all, to be hungering and thirsting after his holy word, which fills us and renews us and gives us strength so that we can walk through each and every day, bringing him glory, honor, and praise. Well, I have been praying for each of you, friends, and I pray that this is true for you, that you are walking deeply in the Spirit of God, learning to become lower, more humble, more meek, as you spend time with the Most High each and every day, and as you see Him in all of His glory, all of His beauty, all of His majesty, and all of His holiness. Well, friends, we're continuing our study through the book of James. And today we're going to begin in chapter 3. So if you have your Bibles, James chapter 3, and let's begin at verse 1. Now it says, My brethren, which would indicate he is writing to a fellow follower of the Lord Jesus. My brothers, my sisters, do not be many masters, knowing that we, the masters, shall receive the greater condemnation. Now, when it speaks of masters here, it's speaking to those who are teaching the word of God. And it doesn't indicate a level of authority other than the fact the things that we teach come from the authority, and that would be the word of God. And so there's no authority that man holds over another other than the word of God. Even pastors, those that we would think would have authority over us, Jesus said, the greatest among you, the masters, the teachers, they will become the lowest of you. So they're not here to rule over you. They are here to serve you. That's what the word minister means. It means one who is come to serve. That's why when Jesus was in his wilderness experience, it says the angels came to him after his three temptations and they ministered unto him. They served him. And so are we. We're to serve one another. And any authority that we have over one another only comes from the holy written word of God. But that being said, James says, do not be many teachers. Because there are so many ways that the Bible, the holy written word of God, can be misinterpreted if not rightly divided. And what this means is we cannot take a scripture alone, a passage alone, and stand upon it. We must verify it in two or three more places throughout the Bible. Because the best way to explain the Bible is with the Bible. And so if there's a passage that you don't understand, dig deeper because there's other parts of the Bible that will clarify that to you and explain it to you. But James continues by saying, when we take the role of a teacher, we become responsible for the things that we are teaching. So we better be sure that what we are teaching is in the Holy Word, is backed by God. That we are not teaching things that would satisfy us. We're not giving our opinions. We're not teaching for our own benefit things that we can get from it. But we are preaching and teaching the pure, unadulterated, uncompromising truth that comes from the Word of God. And we will be held accountable for each and everything we teach. That's why when we're speaking with others, we have to be so very careful in what we say. And that's why there is so much untruth being propagated throughout the world in which we live because so many people are saying things that they want to be true rather than teaching the truth itself. And Jesus said in John chapter 17, thy word, O God, is truth. 
That's why we begin each video by saying the Holy Word of God is our only standard and authority for truth. We take our truth from nowhere else. We form our opinions from nowhere else. We take our positions from nowhere else. We read the Word of God and we conform our thoughts and our lives to what the Word of God teaches. And we abandon everything that does not stand true to Scripture. Everything that we've been taught, everything that we've been told, everything that we believe has to be measured according to the Word of God. And this is why most people don't read the Word of God because they are too weak they are lacking in the courage that it requires to abandon what it is that they've been told their whole life. That's much more comfortable. Rather than leaving what they've been told, they find that too discomfortable. And maybe that's what Solomon meant when he said in the book of Proverbs, a wise man remains silent. We can offer our opinions on many things, but our opinions can be wrong. But the word of God, praise God, is never wrong. Well, he continues this thought in verse 2, and he says, There are many things in which we will offend all. If we stand true to the word of God, the black and white of the word of God, we're going to offend many people. And no matter how many things we've made right in our lives with God, there are still things within us, there are still works of the flesh that must be identified and dealt with. And when the word of God or others speak to us about these issues, it's going to offend us as it should. And so James says, if any man does not offend in word, the same is a perfect man. And he's able to bridle the whole body. So James says, if you can learn to control what you say, that is the heart of the whole issue. Everything after that will be easy. Discipline in your body will be easy. The tongue is the hardest to control. Well, he gives us an example in verses 3 and 4 so that we can better understand what it is he's saying. He says, we put bits in horses' mouths so that we can control them, so that they will obey us. If we pull the right side of the bit, they're going to turn to the right. If we pull the left, they're going to turn to the left. If we pull straight back, they're going to stop. And so we're able to control them by this very little tiny piece of equipment. And James is relating that tiny piece of equipment to the tongue. And he's showing how the tongue controls the whole of the body. Jesus himself said, what comes out of the mouth comes from the heart. It portrays what is actually going on in, in the heart. Well, he continues in verse four with the second example. He says, imagine a ship. Although that ship is great and large and it is driven by fierce winds, yet that ship is guided by a small helm. And wherever the pilot or the captain of that ship steers that tiny small helm, that's where the ship goes. Well, James says in verse 5, Even so, as it is with the bits in the horse's mouth and the helm on the ship, so is the tongue a little member. But it boasts great things. And yet in these great things that it boasts, in these great things that it speaks, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Because the tongue is a fire. It is a world of iniquity, a world of sin. And it defiles the whole body. And it itself is set on fire of hell. Now every kind of beast, bird, serpent, things in the sea, these can all be tamed. And they have been tamed throughout the course of history. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Now let's talk about that for a min minute because that seems very negative. It says the tongue no man can tame. And that is true. If you try to tame your tongue on your own, you're not going to be able to do it. But the Bible tells us to look to God to put a guard upon our mouths so that we can watch what it is that we say. 
So although man cannot tame his tongue, God can tame his tongue. And the way God tames the tongue of a man is exactly what Jesus said. What proceeds out of the mouth comes from the heart. And so God changes the heart of a man. Therefore, the heart being changed, the tongue is changed. The heart being become tamed, the tongue is tamed. And so God can tame the tongue of man. He can tame your tongue, friend. He can keep you from speaking lies. He can keep you from speaking deception. He can keep you from speaking gossip. He can keep you from speaking curse words. He can keep you from speaking negatively. He can, hallelujah, and he will. Well, James says in verse 9, I want you to consider this. You bless God with your tongue. You pray unto God. You give praise unto God with your tongue. But at the same time, you curse men. Now, do you remember in Romans chapter 13, it says not to speak evil against anyone, especially the leaders of our world, those who have been placed in authority over us. For when we speak against them, God having put them in that position, we're actually speaking against God. And so James says you're speaking blessing with your tongue, but you're speaking cursing with your tongue. So out of your mouth proceeds both blessing and cursing. My brothers, my sisters, these things ought not so to be. Learn to put a guard upon your mouth. Learn to seek God to tame your tongue. A single fountain cannot send forth both sweet water and bitter, nor can a fig tree bear olives or a vine figs. So rather than your focus being upon so many other things that you could occupy yourself with, focus upon how you speak, what you say, and learn the full magnitude of what you say, how it can have an effect upon others around you, how something you say can change the opinion of another, the attitude of another, the feelings of another. And that's why Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 4, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but only that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Now stop and think about the things that you say. Stop and think about the things that your conversation is filled with. Are you bringing a blessing? Are you speaking grace unto the person that's listening? Well, if you're not speaking the word of God, the truth of God, the things of God, then you're not imparting a blessing. And so if we scale that down a little bit more, what we're basically saying is there's no blessing in speaking of sports, in speaking about the weather, in speaking about politics, or so many vain things that we talk about. Our conversation should be filled with the things of God, encouraging others, motivating others, rebuking others with love so that our conversation brings glory, honor, and praise to the Lord Jesus. The people who we conversate with in this world can find regular conversation from anyone else in this world. We as God's people should be always careful, always alert, always conscious of the fact that we only have a limited time to speak to someone. So let us not speak to them of the things of this world or the things about our lives or their lives. Let us be faithful in promoting Jesus, his kingdom, his authority, and his rule in everything we say and every time we speak. Well, friends, I love you. I'm so thankful again that you're with us today. And as we come to a close, I simply want to encourage you to focus upon your conversation, the things you say, realizing that the things you say are a reflection of your heart. The things you talk about are a reflection of your heart. And if you will only stop and listen to yourself as you speak, which so often we do not, but if you will, you will probably be very surprised of how much you speak of things of this life and how little you speak of the things of the kingdom to come. Well, as I said, friends, I can never say it too much. 
I truly and deeply love you. I pray for you each and every night. Now may your journey be blessed today in the Lord Jesus and may your conversation be heavenly and sweet. Now as he wills and until next time, friends, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.